Hi, it's me, Red. Today we're talking to Robin Jones, the author of the cool new book, The Memphis Boys, The Story of American Studio. Hello. Hello, Robin. Oh, yes. Red Kelly, how are you? I'm fine, man. How are you? Very well, thank you. It's great to uh, get to talk to you. That's so cool. One of the things I would like to see this book do is give Chips his rightful place among the great producers that everyone reveres so much. I would also like to see Tommy take his rightful place among the, uh, the great producers that everyone reveres so much because Tommy, as a producer, was so far ahead of his time. Tommy was the one who held it together. I always say, and, and everybody in the group would say this, Tommy was the soul of that band. He was the one everybody looked up to. His influence on that studio and that whole band was just incalculable. As both a producer and a bass player, his work is just so intricate. There's so much for your mind to take hold of when he played. You're talking about crying like a baby. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's an obscure B-side of a choo-choo train called um, Field of Clover. Okay. And he is just, he is just kicking the tar out of that track. Mm -hmm. It's, it's absolutely incredible. There's a there's a long uh, fade out. And he just, you know, Wade Jackson and the Memphis Horns playing over the rhythm track. Mm -hmm. And he just kicks that track like nobody's business. He's, he was incredible. He really was. He was, I, I think he was, I think he was the best bass player. It's quite a testament that here's Atlantic sitting there in New York with all the money and all the studio musicians in the world and they came down to that funky little studio. And those, you know, that period when Atlantic was there is just untouchable to me. It's just fantastic. Well, from every account, the Atlantic people absolutely loved American and vice versa. Mm -hmm. that, that Buddy Killen come in and do the incredible work he did with Joe Tex there. No problem, you know. I was just thinking of, yeah. uh, I was just thinking of Buddy Killen and uh, Killen was uh, a loyal fan and patron of their work uh, all the way through. All the way, yeah. Uh, he really loved what they were doing. Well, he had Chips play on uh, the early Joe Tex size in Nashville after Chips had the uh, falling out of stacks. Well, he, you yeah. people don't know, but, but uh, he played on Joe Tex's first hit. You know that guitar that starts off Hold, hold On To What You Got? Mm -hmm. That's Chips. No, I didn't realize that. See, that's, that's fantastic. Chips. Yeah. And that, about that in the book. That's Chips. That's Chips. Yeah. That's, and, and if you notice, that little, that little guitar lick is the same guitar lick that starts off Dark End of the Street. The amazing thing to me, Robin, is as years go by, there's records that I really have loved for years, and then I find out it's them, you know? It's wild. I mean, that, like, let's say some of these O.V. Wright singles that Willie Mitchell produced, that's Reggie Young on the guitar, and that's just incredible. Exactly. And that, people, you know, you read a lot, you know, that, you know like, you, they came from Stan Kessler, put the band together. But prior to that, the, the, you know, the Bill Black combo and all those early high records, that, that's Reggie and it's, and it's Bobby Emmons, right? Yeah, it's Reggie, Bobby Emmons. And then a little later on, after around 64, 65, uh, on the high records, uh, you'll you'll also hear Reggie Young on the Oh, I didn't realize it. No kidding. Wow. So you had four of the American group there affiliated with High. That studio and those players have never gotten uh, gotten any of the credit that they should have gotten. And that's one of the things I wanted the book to do. I wanted it to make people I wanted to make people aware of how much they really had contributed to music. I have a, a wonderful line in the book regarding Chips's, uh, uh, Chips's talent for song selection. Uh, Sandy Posey, of course, who worked closely with Chips for many years, she said, Chips didn't look for a country song or a pop song or a, a blues song. He looked for a great song. He, he just transcended categories. Obviously, Chips wanted a label of his own. He, he wanted, like, an empire of his own. I think Chips was a bit a bit naive about it. Yeah. I think he was he was very naive. 
naive in a lot of his dealings with the industry in, the, in those early days, and I talk a bit about that. Yeah, that's where Don Cruz comes in. I think that was a brilliant partnership they had because it was. he didn't have to think about that kind of stuff, and Don was astute businessman and was good at what he did. Because Chip simply does not have that kind of head. Some people don't. Some people, some people can do music and be a businessman. Uh, Chip did not have that in him. He was, he was strictly for the art of the thing. Bobby Womack is lead player, uh, lead player on a lot of the stuff because Richie would defer to uh, Womack when they were working together. He talks in the book about how much he learned from people like Womack and from Pete Curtis. I mentioned that beautiful love the time is now. Mm -hmm. That is one of my uh, one of my favorite records of its kind. It's a beautiful, beautiful record. Chips did something so unique, so evocative of time and place with music that I consider Chips the Duke Ellington of the South. Nobody has ever worked musically with the themes of sadness and sorrow as well as him. Subject matter has always been pain, suffering, sorrow. Hard times, hard choices, hard circumstances. That's what Chips would do. He would give those songs a context, a depth. But there was so much truth that was conveyed in that music. What do you think is the one song that defines the American studio? It's a song that Mark James and Spooner Oldham wrote for B.J. Thomas called I've Been Down This Road Before. Okay. String arrangement by Mike Leach. Produced by Chips. 1968 from BJ's album On My Way. Hmm. People don't know. Yeah. Well, hopefully this book is going to tell them, right? That's what I want. That's what I want to do. I want people to be. I want it more than anything for people to be aware of the studio, aware of the great work that that they've done, and I wanted I wanted people to be aware of Chips as a great producer and Tommy as a great producer. Eric Cruz has done a lot to archive their history, so has their uh, former percussionist, Hayward Bishop. Papa yeah. Don contributed a beautiful cover photograph, mm -hmm. and uh, all thanks to Papa Don for that. There's, there's some interesting stories in there from Papa Don mm. about some of the great records he made with James and Bobby Purify in the studio. Why was it torn down? I mean, do you know what... I don't know, I don't know why it was torn down. They just couldn't find anybody to keep it up, I guess. Yeah. When was it torn down? Uh, 1989, I believe. 89. Uh, and uh, I know they, they sort of reconstructed stacks brick by brick, and I wish they'd do that with America. Amen. And we're, we're going to push for it. I really feel that I was handed a, a very sacred trust. I just want to have done right by them and, and to have gotten it accurate for their sakes, because that book was... That, that book's picture will go in the dictionary under labor of love. <laughs> All right, well, I think... Uh, the people out there are excited about this, and I hope you sell a million copies. Oh, thank you. And, uh, thank you for the good wish. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Oh, the pleasure was mine, believe me. Talking about American Studios is, uh, is something that I love to do. All right, so we're going to push for this uh, American Studio okay. uh, Museum. Okay. I want to do a reunion, American Sound Reunion Concert. What do you think? Are you with me? I think it, I think it would be. Would that be awesome? And I've already spoken to several people, including Chips, and he's like, let's do it. So we just got to do it. We just got to get the people together and do it. I'm always around. Shoot me an email, whatever, and maybe we'll see you on Facebook. All right. All right. All right. Thanks, Red. Thanks for talking to me today. All right. Thank you very much.